What's up, Cubers? Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I made my last road to national slash world record for clock, so today I decided to share something that I learnt with you. If you have a clock at home, um, you could try this out yourself, um, but this is currently what I'm working on uh, to try and improve my clock skills. So just before I start, this isn't an original video, I used Owen Morrison's idea but I thought, oh wow, this is pretty cool, uh, this could help with my road to, I'm going to call it the national record. This could help my road to national record, let's put it on my channel. So if you want to go and check his channel out, I will link it in the description. Uh, thanks so much for this idea, and let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about pin order, but first we best know what it means. Pin order is the order in which you push up or push down each of the pins on your clock. For example, if you were doing a solve, Owen Morrison, which is the video I watched and the actual pin order I used, if all the pins started down, he would start with this one, then push it down, this one, then push it down, this one, but then instead of pushing it down, you just move up this one. So I will do a an, or a an example solve in a minute of what this looks like, but this pin order is actually extremely efficient. Now, the reason you need a pin order is to A, help you look ahead in your solves, and B, improve your muscle memory. For example, if you're starting with this pin, then this one, then this one, then this one, it's always in your muscle memory to start with this one, then move on to the next one. Whereas if you do what I used to do and just start any random one, whichever one feels best, not only are you going to struggle with planning your next move because you don't know which pin does what, you're also going to struggle having different moves in your muscle memory. Muscle memory when solving the clock is very important because it allows you to get a feel of what the dials are actually like and how much strength you need to put into each turn. But like I said, it also helps with your look ahead. So my and Owen Morrison's pin order is DL, which is this pin, UL, which is this pin, UR, which is this pin, and then these two at the same time, UR and DR. So what this looks like, if all the pins are down, DL up, move these clocks, or dials, this one goes up, and you move these ones, this one goes up, and you move these ones, but then you also put this one up at the same time and move these ones to align it with this one. Okay, so I've got the scrambled clock here. Now let's do an example solve. Right, so currently I have all the pins pushed up. But I'm actually going to turn it over and start with all of them down. Now, I haven't really been working on any serious look ahead at the moment. I have just been working on a pin order. So what you would start off by doing is pushing this pin up and aligning this clock with this clock. And we can do that by moving this dial down one. Now that these two are matching, we push this pin down and this one up. That means we can align these two with this start, this clock, of, like little thingy. I don't, I don't even know what they're called. Okay, so then we push this one down and this one up to align these two with this bottom one. Now, what's really important here and what's actually very efficient is instead of starting like doing the pins and then having two on the opposite side we actually instead of pushing this pin down we only need to push this one up which it saves quite a lot of time and a lot of moves because then we can align these two with this one just by moving one pin now we push these two up and align the clocks with the 12 o'clock position then we do a y2 to rotate or you could do a x2 but then it's not super efficient all the time so you do a Y2, and actually I have learnt to only, when if I have all the pins up, when I do a Y2, push this pin down, because actually as you turn the clock over, this is the pin that we need up. So now we turn this dial and align this clock with this clock. Okay, like this. Then we move this pin down and this pin up to align these two with this one. Now, just a quick note, whichever pin you push up should be the dial you're using, apart from when you push up this second one, because it's easier to use these top two dials than these bottom ones. So anyways, now that we have these three aligned, we move this one down and this one up, so that we can align these with this one. Like this. And then, like I said, we have to push this one up, but instead of turning this dial, which is quite hard, we can just keep our finger up here to align these four clocks with this one. Now, another really important thing I learned that is also very efficient is actually I used to um, move all the dials back to the 12 o'clock position, then do the corners. 
But in actual fact, from wherever you just finished your cross, which is these pieces, when they're all aligned, you can just start doing the corners. Now, you should probably use the same pin order for this, I guess, but also kind of different. But anyways, I like to start with this top corner, but maybe I should work on that. Um, if there is a more efficient way, I don't know how anyone's going to let me know, but if you have a channel, I'm subscribed to a lot of my subscribers. You could put a video on it of like how, how the best way to do corners, but that's fine if you don't. I would probably just go on YouTube and there will be something somewhere. So anyways, I push this pin down and align everything. I'd make sure to not turn this one. Align the cross with this corner. Then you can push this next one down. And align these like these cross pieces and this corner with this um, little face thing then you want to push down this one and align the clocks with that but now I actually just forgot to push this one back up which is what I do a lot it's super important to push the pin you've done like you've just done back up I always forget so anyways you push this one down and align these one two seven with this um, bottom left one like so then sometimes you'll get really lucky and this dial will be already at 12 o'clock which is very lucky sorry about that pause um i will carry on but that you'll notice a lot of transitions in this video compared to other ones well the app that i use to edit has had an update meaning that i can't um there's only a certain length of video so that's why i had to pause that because the, all, the footage was already getting quite long so anyways you want to push down this corner and align all of these pieces with this little corner thing then push the pin up and put it at 12 o'clock and this actually solves the clock so sorry if you didn't understand much of this video um but if you do like clock and you want to get faster this video could help you i will bring out a tutorial on how to solve the clock but for now i just wanted to share with you the knowledge that i've learned this week since i haven't done a clock road world record in so long I don't know if it's called national record or world record, I, I always get it mixed up. But yeah, this is the sadly the end of the video, uh, that's pretty much all I've learnt. So I'm going to stop it here, uh, have a brilliant day, and please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And if, you if you're going to find these tips helpful, please leave a like on the video. Bye!